Welcome to your number one sports show on television. This is Sports Today and is only here on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV. My name is Nathaniel Atto. I'm, support, I'm supported by the rest of the Joy Sports team. And I'll go to, I'm going to bring you one hour and 30 minutes of everything from the world of sport. Today we're focusing on the black stars who play Montenegro in a pre-World Cup friendly. So big questions to be asked. The only local player in the squad is uh, goalkeeper Steven Adams. So would you, prepare, uh, would you prefer he's used? Ahead of uh, goalkeeper Adam Larson Kwarase for this particular friendly. Remember, it's a friendly. We're testing our options. What do we do? You start uh, bringing in your messages. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this particular game, Ghana versus Montenegro. Um, remember, it's Nathaniel Atto Citizen Atto on Facebook. And also, you can go through 1760, um, and that is for only. 30 Ghana Pesos. Let's hear from you because the show is always interactive. Also, we'll be going into the other friendlies, um, you know, in, in, in the friendly involving England, for instance. Uh, many are just talking about Tom Cleverley and how he should not be included in the squad. But guess what? Um, England, uh, England's manager says that, look, um, put all of that aside. The player does deserve a place in the uh, Three Lions team. So, so many updates coming from uh, the world as we uh, prepare all the teams, all the big teams for the uh, World Cup. And when I say big, I'm talking about any team that has qualified for the FIFA World Cup in Brazil because, of course, it's been a very, very tough and arduous uh, qualification journey. So we'll also be bringing you updates from the world of sports. We'll go to tennis. We'll also do some boxing as well. We'll be talking about Joshua Clote and um, some of the things that he wants to get going. Of course, we'll also be talking about the local grudge fight that is upcoming uh, later on on April 18 right here on the show. So that's the reason why you have to keep it right here. Today, we're focusing clearly on the senior national team of Ghana, the Black Stars, who will be going into this friendly against Montenegro. So um, you send in your messages. Remember, it's Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. Get on my wall on Facebook and let's get talking about this subject. Would you rather goalkeeper Steven Adams starts this game? Would you want to see Adam Lassen Kwarase sit back again? Uh, you know, on the bench. Well, big questions to be asked. Well, let's see how all of that goes for this particular game. Remember that uh, Harrison Affel was unable to secure a visa, so he is unable to join the team for this uh, friendly. All these updates and more right here on the show. A round of commercials, and we go straight to the newspapers. All right, I've got three newspapers in front of me, and I'm talking about the graphic sports, the weekly sports, and the 90 minutes newspapers. Now, um, Jordan Ayu is featured prominently on the front page of the graphic sports newspaper, and it says, uh, Stars to impress appear. Kevin Prince Boating, uh, Stefan Jovetic uh, is also there. He's the Montenegro captain, and Adam Larson Kwarase expected to start in post. So I'm asking you a simple question. Um, you tell me if you, you think that, uh, you know, Larson Kwarase should be the man or Steven Adams should be the man. That, that's if you were um, in the shoes of Coach Kwesi Apea. So there we are. All right. Um, let's get into the inner pages and... Um, Andre Scholler of Chelsea is featured here on the Lifestyle page. So that's it. Andre Scholler on the uh, Lifestyle page. Well, in um, the foreign page, we've got FC Porto defender uh, David Addy. Remember that he has been... Uh, Called up for this game. So the Victoria Gumaresh player is uh, featured there in all the action from Europe in the center spread of the graphic sports newspaper. So there are many other friendlies to be uh, played uh, today. And um, there we are. And uh, there are many of them. Uh, Montenegro playing Ghana. We know that already. And uh, Ukraine is going to host the USA despite all the political unrests. Now, um, there are other games to be interested in. For instance, Germany versus Chile. Uh, you know that Germany is a group uh, opponent 
at the World Cup for Ghana. So that game surely will be. And then another very interesting one is the dress rehearsal for the World Cup. Spain versus Italy. Um, these two teams uh, played in the... Uh, <laughs> In the uh, semi-finals of the uh, FIFA Confederation Cup. And now they're facing each other in a high-profile friendly. France will play the Netherlands. Uh, Switzerland play Croatia. Greece play Korea. Mexico go up against uh, uh, Nigeria. And Cameroon play Portugal. Cristiano Ronaldo's Portugal. So uh, this is the back page of the graphic sports. It has um, an expected starting line up. for the game uh, that will be played uh, in Montenegro. King Faisal to Wari Kotoko. Well, it's a derby later today, and we'll be bringing you all the uh, fixtures uh, for the uh, First Capital Plus Premier League. And so, this is what it's looking like according to the Graphic Sports News by Adam Lassenquara, say Daniel Opare there at left back. And at right back, it will be Samuel Inkum. Jonathan Mensah and John Boy will be in central defense Andre Ayu, Sule Montari, Michael Essien, Kwejua Samoa will be there. And of course, Samoa Jan and Majid Waris will be up front in attack. Well, what do you make of this uh, hopeful starting lineup? You send in your thoughts. Get on my Facebook wall, Nathaniel Ato Citizenato. Let's get talking. So, um, there's also a picture of Michael Essien, Kwejua Samoa, Sule Montari, Kevin Prince Wating, and of course, Emmanuel Ajimambedu in a chartered flight uh, on their way to uh, Montenegro. So, they are already there as we speak, and um, the competition is now on officially for the uh, places in Quesia Pierce's final uh, list for the FIFA World Cup in Brazil. So, there we are. Um, interesting uh, scenes captured by the weekly sports newspaper, which has. Uh, a couple of footballers lighting up a stick or, you know, taking a smoke. So, Neymar is there. Ashley Cole is there. Messi is there. And, of course, um, Kevin Prince Boating is also there. So, uh, all the details are in the weekly sports newspaper. Also, we go to the 90 Minutes. And uh, there is a war over Waris. <laughs> war over Waris. It is, according to the 90 Minutes newspaper, there are um, at least four clubs in Europe who are chasing the signature of uh, Abdul Majid Waris. The speedster is surely at a very big uh, point in his career with uh, a World Cup place beckoning and um, all the delivery he's able to do on the pitch when given the opportunity, surely uh, will go as uh, pluses for him. Now, there is the Adidas icon. It's uh, Luis Suarez. From a Ghanaian perspective, not everybody likes this name and this face. But, well, love him, hate him. He surely does perform for club and country. And also, we look at the back page where Lucas Podolski and Emmanuel Frimpong take a shot. So, well, that's it for the newspapers and whatever we're uh, looking at uh, in terms of the headlines. Let's uh, quickly go to what is happening uh, later today, which is Ghana playing uh, Montenegro, uh, away in Montenegro. It's part of the FIFA uh, International Friendlies. And once again, this is the hopeful starting lineup. Adam Lassen, Kwarase, Jonathan Mensah, uh, Daniel Opare, John Boy, Samuel Linkum, uh, Kwejua Samoa, Michael Essien, Sule Muntari, and Andre Ayu, as well as Abdul Majid Waris and Asamoah Jan. How well can these guys perform? Send in a message and let's start sharing. Let's start talking. All right, so um, last night on Sports Night on the Joy Sports Channel on Multi TV with Kwame Jumajaman, we had uh, ex Ghana defender uh, Joe Addo on the show looking ahead to this game. Let's pick his thoughts. I have so much focus on the EPL and the English game that their minds are not you know, outside of the box. If I say outside of the box, they know the known t countries, the Spains, the Italys, the, the English, you know, the, the, the Germans. But they don't know. These small teams, Montenegro, Croatia, Czech Republic, Poland, Slovenia, these teams, they are very, very difficult to play. Very, very difficult. Because we don't know them. 
you know, and because they don't have that much of a name, a lot of Ghanaians think, oh, they are a walkover. Oh, it's easy. Trust me, it's not easy. Montenegro used to be part of the former Yugoslavia. Yeah. And if we know anything about Croatia and, and, and Serbia, then we should know Montenegro. That is how good they are. They, are. they are really, really good. They've got some very good players playing top leagues in the world, better than we Ghanaians, and, and, and Ghanaians don't even know. So it's a very tough opposition. I think the rationale behind our team playing them is because they are European team, and we'll be playing two European teams. So I think the idea was to play in a European team and see how... Is it just can... about playing an European team or playing a team with a similar playing style as the opponent? Exactly. I would think that that should be the rationale in deciding on country A, B, C. Yes, I think they are because Montenegro is close to Italy, you know. So Italy is also in that part of the uh, Europe is like Portugal because they, they have the, the heat, you know, their temperature is a little bit different than Northern Europe. So I think the idea was to play them to see how they play, similar to how the Portuguese play, because they play a lot of flair games. They are skillful, you know, and, and fit. They are not as strong as, as the Germans, you know. So I'm hoping that, what, and, and our games, you know, our games are very much w well strategized, and you have to give credit where credit is due. The organizers of our friendly games have done really a, a very good job, because we're playing Montenegro, whose style will be similar to Portugal, and then we're playing the Netherlands, whose style will, uh, uh, will be similar to the Germans, you know? And then we go to United Sp uh, States to play against Costa Rica, whose style will be similar to United States, you know what I'm saying? So I think the organizers, they deserve a lot of credit. I would have preferred us play either Mexico or Canada instead of Costa Rica. But Costa Rica is in CONCACAF, so it, it, it makes sense. It's, it's okay. So I'll give them credit. They've done well. But we are talking about Montenegro's game uh, tomorrow, and I, I don't want people to look too much into the results. It's great to have good results, but in these games, the idea behind playing these games is how to organize your team. And I think the technical team is looking for that. They want to see how their team is going to fare against oppositions like that. Secondly, they want to look at the chemistry of the team because you, just because you are a good player doesn't warrant you to be in the national team. Mm -hmm. The national team coaches or technical team want the cohesiveness of the team and, and the, the chemistry of the team. You look at the German coach, Jürgen Löw, who coached me in Stuttgart, by the way. He has some good players playing the Bundesliga, but he doesn't invite them. The top scorer in the league, Stefan Kisling, last year, the who plays for Leverkusen. Player. Yeah. He doesn't have an invite. If he was in Ghana, they would chastise the coach. But in Germany, he says, no, I, I don't need him. I need the old lad. Closer. Yes. Because Closer has been there and done that. So I'm saying all that to say that not every good player warrants to play in a national team. You have to have good chemistry and good run of players who like each other, who want to work for each other. And I think that's what this friendly game is, is about. He's brought in players who know each other already. You know, there was... Two omissions, which surprised me. You know, Fatal's omission surprised me a little bit. And then Rabiu. Yeah, that was that was an interesting one. I mean, we all do know the challenges that he's having at a club in uh, South Africa and all. But I, I just want you to finish, you know, the, the point you were making, and then we can look at the, those particular issues. Yeah, the omission, their omission was because Rabiu, for me, I think he's been our best player. He's He's been very consistent on our team. The only game he did not play was against Egypt, and it's because he, he had an injury. He's been very, very consistent. And when he plays the holding midfield, I think the defense is solidified. Because he's so big, he's in front there. He doesn't do too much. He just wins the ball and lays off, lays off the ball. So uh, I think he, if he comes in, I, I hope he will come in. I think the reason they gave for not inviting him was because he wasn't fit. That's the reason we had. I'm hoping that he gets fit because he's going to help us a lot with his youthfulness, his size, and his experience. You know, I think he's going to help us. With Fatal, I'm hoping that, you know, he comes in the team also because, you know, he, he's been consistent throughout this. Is this case a special case? Because um, for you coaches, you would say you would want to invite players who are playing and very much on top of your game. He's made uh, the move from Ashko to um, Orlando Pirates where um, we're still not too sure of uh, the situation with him. He barely gets a game there. He's been given the opportunity, more of a case of Ika Casillas, but even he gets to play in Champions League games and, you know, uh, Copa del Rey matches. Dauda rarely gets a game. What's, what's so special about him that he still seems to get the nod almost all the time? Uh, I think if you talk to Dauda 
Fatou, if you talk to him, I think he will tell you he's disappointed. I think he will. Because I've been a pro, pro. I played professional football for 16 years. I really know what I'm talking about. It's not fun going to a club and sitting on a bench. It's not fun at all. Regardless of how much money you make, you want to be on the field. And during this campaign that we are going to the World Cup, it's crucial for your decision in, team, in choosing a team. And I think he's very disappointed in what is going on around him. I think so. Uh, I don't know in his psyche how he feels. But if you don't get playing time, and you have to understand, in a footballer's life, consistency makes you better. Consistent, you have to be playing all the time. That makes you better. You can't sit and be good. It, it, it's not written anywhere in a football book. You have to be playing consistently to learn some one or two tricks here and there to get the experience. Even players who have red, who are red carded, when they come into games, the, the game is too speedy, it's too fast in the first 20, 15 minutes. And then you get used to it. How much more somebody is who is sitting for a long time? It's very difficult for you to just come in and stamp your authority on a game. And we saw those lapses when he came against Zambia. Mm -hmm. we, saw, we, saw, we all saw it. And, it was poor. Yes. And everybody said, oh, wow. Then people realized, oh, if he's not playing, then we have to look for somebody else. You know, and then against Egypt, we put him in goal and he did well. Uh, I'm very surprised that he was omitted because he's not playing. <laughs> That's he's not why playing. He's omitted. So he needs to play. If we are taking him to the World Cup and we are saying he's our number one, then he needed to be in this team. Because if they are not playing him there, we should play him. Our coach has apparently said privately that Fatal remains his first choice barring an injury. So even if he's not playing, he's going to be first choice. Three months to go to the World Cup, he's not playing. We, we can't determine what's going to be happening tomorrow. But if the situation persists till May when the season is over and then he joins the national team camp, rusty, would it be a risk worth taking? I think the coach, what he said, he has to say that. What else is he going to say? Well, that? he said that privately. He's not come out to say that publicly. Okay. If it's authentic, then what he said is right. You know, in all our qualifiers, he's, Fatah has played all our qualifiers. And we've lost only two. The first one against Zambia, which was very relevant. But we came back and won all our games mm -hmm. till we lost to Egypt, which is, not, which is irrelevant. Because we had six goals here cushion. So, for me, I don't think of that as a loss. But... He's been a consistent goalkeeper. So obviously, you, you, don't, you will come out and say he's your number one. It's obvious. But you and I know that if you don't play consistently in your team, it's very, very difficult to compete uh, uh, that, that brings position. in uh, what the coach is doing at the moment, or he's done in the last couple of games. He's called goalkeeper after goalkeeper after goalkeeper. He doesn't give them the opportunity for reasons that we find very hard to comprehend. In the last game when Fatal did not do well against Zambia, he got in Richard Kingston, which we all thought, I mean, what, what's this? It, it was a bit funny, and I'm sure you saw all those pictures on Facebook and all. And then uh, on the back of Steven's form in the Chan, he's been invited for the Serbian game. Is he still on setting three months to the World Cup? How Dauda may show up at the Black Stars training camp? I think uh, a couple of things. I don't find Richard Kinson's invite into the team comical at all. I think oh, it, it sounded was, very comical to a lot of people. Yeah, but then they don't really know for what football is. Sometimes you need fire in your back for you to run. And sometimes you need competition for you to do good. I think What's psychologically... Kinson competition? Yeah. He's barely played in the last seven years at club level. Look, I'm telling you that He's when, Fatau, for when Fatau saw Kinson in camp... He knew he had to do better. That's what I'm trying. The picture I'm trying to, you know, paste for you. When he saw Richard Kinsey, because Richard Kinsey has been to two World Cups, he's played in clubs that Fatal would dream of playing, highest level. He's still playing, so I think his invite was psychologically psyching Fatal to do well. That's what I think, and I know I know that's why he was invited. He wasn't invited to come and play. He was invited to boost up the competition in camp for goalies. And I think they got that because that day Fatal played really, really well. When Kingston came to camp, Fatal did well. So that trick worked, you know. And I don't buy the argument that he's been, uh, the coach has been inviting so many goalkeepers. We have five goalkeepers. We have Fatal. In the countries that you have played, have you seen the Germans inviting anyone apart from Manuel Neuer, uh, Rainy Adler, and then maybe uh, Weiden Feller of Borussia Dortmund? I will tell he you, wouldn't call I will a tell thousand you, goalkeepers. I will like tell you here. right now that the example you gave, German, that is a yastic. 
Because Biden fell out until recently was not even invited. <laughs>So that's it. Bring in your messages. Remember, it's 1760 for text uh, if you're on your mobile network. And uh, Nathaniel at all citizen at all on social media, specifically on Facebook. So that's it. Those are the views of the man, uh, detailed views of the man, Joe Addo, who uh, played for Ghana uh, in defense for several years. Now, he has been bringing a, you know, a very uh, you know, experienced point of view to this discussion on Ghana versus Montenegro. First of all, he explains that, look, the Montenegrin side is a very experienced side and they have uh, many players who we may not necessarily know about. And so they are surely uh, a good team to test Ghana, uh, you know, especially considering that it's a European side and Portugal and Germany are also European sides. Two European sides in Group D of the FIFA World Cup in Brazil. Ghana versus Montenegro later today. What are your thoughts? Uh, send them to me. Let's get talking. Okay, so uh, I'm sure by now you've heard that Harrison Afo had to miss uh, the Black Stars game uh, later today. Now, Harrison Afo uh, is set to miss the international friendly because uh, he was unable to secure a travel visa from uh, Tunisia where he is based. Uh, Harrison Afo was one of the players who were invited for this very big game. Unfortunately, was not able to make it because of um, travel visa issues. Let's also focus on Montenegro player Marco uh, Vesovic, who is looking forward to uh, the Ghana clash. And uh, the striker, he uh, is calling on his uh, teammate to knuckle down if they are to beat Ghana in today's international friendly. So it surely is also a very big deal for Montenegro because they surely would like to prove a very, very big point over there. So that is the United States of America group opponents for the Black Stars at the FIFA World Cup. What do you think of it? This is it. And um, this is how they're going to look. Uh, very soon we'll also see what the Black Stars will be looking like at the FIFA World Cup in Brazil in 2014. And uh, we just hope that we're able to get them in our stores to buy. Very, very important. Okay. And uh, these are the uh, international friendlies lined up. Uh, we've got Czech Republic playing Norway. And Slovakia will play Israel while Turkey play Sweden. Now, Romania play Argentina. Uh, United States of America will go ahead to play that game against Ukraine, uh, air, you know, despite the political unrest and all. Now, Uruguay will go up against Austria while Switzerland play Croatia and uh, Belgium play uh, Ivory Coast and of course uh, Germany play Chile and uh, England also face uh, 1992 European Cup winners Denmark. Let's now go to some more games that I'll be expecting later today. Japan play New Zealand and India play Bangladesh. That sounds like a cricket uh, test match. Uh, Burundi play Rwanda and Algeria face Slovenia, while Greece play South Korea. Finland play uh, Hungary, and of course that big game between Montenegro and Ghana. Mozambique play Angola, and Brazil play South Africa. Bosnia-Herzegovina, they will face uh, Africa's most successful nation at the Nations Cup, Egypt. So uh, that's it for the uh, international friendly some more. France versus Netherlands, uh, very, very big superpowers in Europe coming up against each other, France and Netherlands. And, of course, Ghana's uh, Group D opponent, Portugal, going up against Cameroon, who uh, hopefully will be led by Samuel Eto'o Fields. Uh, St. Lucia will play Jamaica, while Italy face Spain, another big uh, European uh, clash. And Honduras, they face Venezuela. Goals will come from uh, Muntari and uh, Kevin Prince Boating. Remember, 
Kwarasi will be in the post uh, for Ghana. Okay, so here with me is uh, Coach Isaac Opele Boating. Thanks for joining us here on the show. All right, now uh, you tell me, um, a lot of the debate that's been ongoing today has been about the goalposts. Who mans the goalpost? For you, um, where do you see it tilting towards? Is it towards the Kwarasi who's not been uh, in action for Ghana in a while or the uh, Stephen Adams who impressed at the Chan tournament? Well, if uh, I have to use uh, football uh, objectivity, Kwarasi will have to be in the goalpost because he used to be the number one after Olele, then Fatal Dauda came in. Uh, so this is an opportunity for the coach to see Kwarasi for us to be a bit convinced about his ability to compete with Fatal Dauda. I see. Uh, starting Adams might not give us a clear picture because uh, Adam, to me, is, is a potential goalkeeper at that stage. But then he's not a contender for the number one position. The main and, and what about the um, the issue about getting you know um, you know getting him that experience? This is a good platform for getting an experience, especially when we want to take a major decision on him. Yeah, definitely. But I don't think uh, any coach, even Jose Mourinho, will put Steven Adams in the goalpost at the World Cup to start a game against the USA. It will, by all means, be between Karasi and Fatal Dauda. I see. I know a lot of people might disagree with me, but you can compare the shots at the chance to that at the World Cup. To mm -hmm. London Donavans and Clint Dempsey and Ronaldo and the rest. Shots when they come in at the goalkeeper. So to me, we should start Kwarase. Adams can come in in the second half. Maybe 30 minutes or 45 minutes in the second half for the coach to assess him. But to me, I would prefer Kwarase to start for us to see who is the real contender for the number one position. Because you know, we have a few months to the World Cup, and we do not know our number one goalkeeper for the World Cup. And that's a big uh, uh, thing for us to solve. All right. Now, um, in defense, it's, uh, you know, Daniel Opare, John Boy, Jonathan Mensah, and Samuel Inkum. Yes. Uh, John Boy, Jonathan Mensah, two good uh, uh, central defenders. But they've not been able to establish themselves at that position. They've not been able to show leadership quality like Sami Kufo said the other time. So to me, I think they have to, to begin to mature at their position. They have to show they've got something to offer Ghanaians. Like even how uh, the former local player uh, Sheila Iliasu did for the Black Stars in 2006. They've not been able to show that. They've shown inconsistent play. Though Boy has been doing well. But technically, if you look at some of the goals the Black Stars have considered that he's played, uh, some you might blame it on him. Apart from that, Inkum too is done well to find a club. We hope you will be able to do well. You know the defense that Coach Apia called? Only two have got World Cup experience. That's Samuel Inkum and Jonathan Mensa. So Inkum will be of, of, of a very good help in this encounter. And I hope that Opare and Co. Too will do their best. Okay, so we go to uh, the midfield. We've got Andre Didiayu, Sule Ali Montari, um, Michael Essien, and uh, Kwejua Samoa there. Fantastic midfield. It's a midfield that uh, even the English national team would like to bargain for. I, for instance, believe that I would have preferred the Blasters playing the 4 1 4 1 formation. But I think Coach Kwesi Apia prefers the 4 4 2 formation. That's why he's got this fantastic four midfield that's there. 4 1 4 1 might have helped us so that there could be somebody who would do the dirty job for SN and Muntari so that SN and Muntari could advance to support Asamwajan for them to find the needed goals. But then that's the philosophy of the code, the system, the 442. So I have but no Andrea Yu is known to do these dirty jobs, uh, within the midfield sometimes. Yeah, he does it, but he's on the flank. I'm, I'm talking about a, a defensive midfielder or holding midfielder who, who allow ACN and 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 Montari to, to, to attack. Let's say that will be ACN and Montari, then the holding midfielder will be behind them, he'll be at the base of it. Then they can move forward to support Asamwajan at the front there. But then 4422 is not a bad thing. What we see Apia does with this system, with his 442, is that he plays the four defenders, four midfielders, two strikers. But then when we lose possession, he makes it like this. So the Warriors comes to support the midfielders to make it at least 5451 formation. So to me, it's all right. Okay, so let's look at the front line. Um, Abdul Majid Waris uh, getting a very good opportunity. Luck has also been on his side. Uh, he has performed any time he's been given the opportunity. He pairs up with the regular uh, Asamaji and the skipper. Yes, uh, Waris is a young guy and he's doing so well. You know, the pair of Waris and Asamajan reminds me of the 2006 World Cup where Jan was with uh, Matthew Amwa. That's what we've gotten now. 
John was the young boy doing the work for Matthew. And so now it has turned. John is now <laughs> the older player and Warwick is doing the dirty job by coming to the midfield to support and then join John in attack. To me, the pair is fantastic. All that we need from John is for him to be a bit fitter so that he can be able to advance through the flanks and send crosses in like he did for Ghana against Egypt. The one that Kevin Prince brought him buried. If Asamwajan can do that for us by being able to run to the flanks and be supporting Warriors with some crosses, I think that the, the team should be perfect. Okay. So, Montenegro, how much of a challenge do they give us later today? I, I don't see them giving us a challenge. They did so well during their 2006 World Cup qualifier. 2012-30 World Cup qualifier. Uh, they won four out of five games, but then the team... Uh, performance sunk deeply in their last seven games they've won only one that was 4-1 victory against losing back in a friendly match so to me i don't see them giving us any trouble uh, uh, they are there are two key players jo uh, jovetic and uh, vucinic will not play because of injuries but they've got one player dijan damjanovic he is he plays in china but he's a very good player he scored against england in their 4-1 loss in england and 1-1 game that they played in, in montenegro so He's the only player who might give us a little bit of threat, but I don't see them bothering us at all. Never. All right. So uh, more messages are expected. Nana Kwesi Kwati Amini Ampon says, My team Germany will beat Chile by three goals to nil. Now Lady Joyce Anna says, Go, go, Black Stars. Win, win, win. All the best. Okay. So these are some of the messages that we're getting. Uh, Big Sam T says, Today, the, today's game is fire for fire for the Black Stars, and they have to win this game. If I were to be coach Kwesi Apea, I will choose Kwarasi because he's a good goalkeeper. And a good morning, Nat. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 1760. And also, get on my Facebook wall. It's uh, Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. And you can also get through to us on 1760. Uh, there is more here on the show. And of course, uh, you know, let me just quickly ask, uh, you know, uh, Coach Opele Boating, there are big, big games to play today. Uh, Spain playing Italy, South Africa testing their strength again against, uh, you know, the, the current host of the World Cup and all. Yeah. Which ones are, are catching your attention uh, today? Uh, Netherlands, France. Okay. Big game. That is going to be a very big game. And Cameroon and Portugal. The Portuguese have chosen Cameroon because of Ghana. Because they want to see how we play. But there is no similarity between how the Cameroonians play how we play. They are more physical. But then uh, it will be very interesting for us to see how Ronaldo will fare against Cameroon. And to give us a clear picture of how the Portuguese can fare against an African. So my only problem is that Bruno Alves, who will be the, the, the difference between maybe Ghana and Portugal, will not feature in the, in the Cameroonian game. Apart from that, I think they are all friendly matches. The funny one will be the Indian-Bangladesh one that you spoke about. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Yeah, it sounded more like a cricket, you yeah. know, test game. Yes, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's very funny. I wish I could see that match. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you have seen India in action before? Well, I, you know, not, not, not really. Uh, India not too known for their football. So, uh, Coach uh, Opele Bajin, thank you so uh, much uh, you for too. the time. So, we're building up still to those big World Cup qualifiers and all of it is right here on Sports Today on the Joy Sports channel on Multi TV. Remember, you can get on my Facebook one, Nathaniel Atta, Citizen Atta, and uh, place your comments there as we build up to this very big one. So, um, there are more stories and, uh, you know, Andre Ayu is one of the players who will be featuring in that game. And uh, he is uh, looking to sort out his Marseille future very, very soon. Andre Ayu, remember that he uh, has had uh, major challenges deciding on his future at Marseille. The player has done a lot with Marseille, uh, tasting uh, some Champions League action as well. But there are pundits who also say that he needs to move away so that he could be able to get the opportunity to win the UEFA Champions League. All right, we go to Abdul Majid Waris, who is one major talking point in the Black Stars team as we uh, you know, look ahead to this Montenegro friendly. Now the Gopocha, he's relishing to stay in France and uh, wishes to serve notice to his employers in Russia to make his loan move, a permanent, uh, loan move a permanent one with uh, the Ligue 1 season.
Let's also uh, take a look at Ghanaian winger Quincy Ousua Beye, who will have to look elsewhere after failing on trials with uh, Spanish side Real Valladolid. All right, so we do some more stories here. And uh, Ghana defender Gideon Ba played his first game for AJK Helsinki in a 3 1 defeat to uh, uh, Rover Nyman. Uh, Palusera in the uh, Finnish League Cup. Okay, so Gideon Ba has been able to at least uh, get himself um, acquainted with uh, the rest of the world. Now let's uh, take a look at goalkeeper Daniel Ajay, who has returned to training with Free State Stars after undergoing a successful surgery. All right, so we also focus on the man, Lee Addy, who claims that he will be fit in the next four weeks. And uh, this is contrary to reports that he will be out for the next season and uh, the 2014 World Cup due to that injury. All right, so uh, Lee Addy, he says that he is going to be fit. Well, it just tells you how amazing it is and how interesting it is that many people just uh, resort to almost every possible thing so they could just go to the FIFA World Cup. A big stage indeed, there's no doubt about that. Send in your messages, 1760, and also Nathaniel Atto, Citizen Atto. We will go on a round of commercials, and uh, after that, we do some more stories. Um, of course, this will include what is happening in... Um, boxing and of course the english premier league and uh moto gp news as well what will make up the moment of the day i don't really know i'll be telling you about that uh, later on after my producer has told me what exactly the surprise is about all right so you stay right there this is sports today and it's only here on the joy sports channel on multi tv don't get away from your screen Let's go to the camp of Kumasi Asante Kotoko, where Opokunti, the acting CEO, is expected to stay on uh, till the end of the season. Remember that uh, Opokunti, the uh, former player of the club, who is now acting CEO, uh, has been tasked to uh, uh, oversee the affairs of the club in an acting capacity. But we've been told by this uh, story that, well, the man is going to stay on till the end of the season. Let's also, um, all right, now uh, midfielder Yaya Mohamed says that he's determined to give off his best effort for the remainder of his contract with uh, Asante Kotoko. Remember that um, a few weeks ago, uh, Yaya Mohamed went over to uh, Libya to sign a contract with a club, and he has uh, signed uh, to begin from when he uh, severs the relationship with Kumasi. Asante Kotoko. All right, so we do some more stories. And uh, goalkeeper, uh, not goalkeeper, but... All right, so we'll be, we'll be doing some more stories here, but let's focus on the uh, First Capital Plus Premier League. And these are the uh, games to expect today. A very big derby in Kumasi, indeed. King Faisal going up against Kumasi Asante Kotoko at the Bavaria Stadium, Heart of Lions. They will play Bichim United. Liberty uh, will play Hazakes, while Ashanti will play into Allies. And Amidal's professionals play New Edubiasi. All right, Midyama SC will fly out to Morocco on Wednesday morning ahead of, uh, uh, that's today, uh, ahead of uh, Saturday's return, CAF Confederation Cup match against uh, Maghreb de Fest and uh, Midyama. They are expected to uh, overcome uh, the uh, Moroccan side to advance to the next stage of the competition. And Nigeria will prepare for the World Cup with a friendly against Scotland uh, at Fulham's Craven Cottage on May 28. Well, this is uh, what the situation is looking like for the Super Eagles. And of course, let's see if they are able to live up to the quality of the likes of uh, the 98 squad, which played at the World Cup in France, the likes of Sunday Olise, JJ Okocha, and all. Now hopes uh, of a strange Super Eagles hitman, Ike Chukuche, making the World Cup team to Brazil may not materialize as a chairman of the uh, House of Representatives 
has also added his voice. All right, so um, of course, in that big uh, issue or that story, the um, the congressman is uh, you know adding his voice to that issue. So many other players, uh, you know, are not sure of making it. Now Nigeria will have to do without Captain uh, Joseph Yobo for their friendly against uh, Mexico in Atlanta today. Now, um, Yobo, who's 33, has not played for Nigeria since they won the Africa Cup of Nations in South Africa last year, and he suffered an undisclosed strain. Now, um, the Norwich defender has been replaced by 25-year-old and capped German-born defender Leon Balogun. Now, um, Balogun, who plays for German second division side Fortuna Düsseldorf, is uh, with a Nigerian father and a German mother. All right, so now um, Oluwashina Okeleji of the BBC uh, writes the story from Lagos, says uh, Nwako Kano is uh, recovering from uh, a heart surgery in the United States of America. Remember that uh, Kanu was, uh, had his life uh, saved, uh, Kanu had his life saved uh, when uh, he had an earlier operation several years ago playing for Arsenal. In the English Premier League, his younger brother, Ugbona, told the BBC Sport that the former Arsenal striker is doing well after the operation. And the former Nigeria captain first had a heart surgery in November 1996. Carl Froch versus George Groves. Who wins this one? Carl Froch has the titles and, uh, you know, Groves uh, wants to uh, challenge him. The first one not ending too well, but, well, we'll see how... It's it. It happens. Well, uh, that's it for the show. Thank you very much for keeping it here. Thanks for all those messages that you brought in. Friday will be our next stop. And uh, I wish you all a happy uh, Independence Anniversary celebration ahead of time. 57 years of Ghana's independence. We pray for uh, more ideas and more, you know, uh, patriotism and more will to make our nation succeed. And uh, thanks to the whole production team out there for keeping it always strong with uh, the... Uh, show uh, sports today on the joy sports channel on multi tv okay so i need to go away and now um we, we we have to bring you the moment of the day the top five mba moves from the weekend you enjoy my name is nathaniel atto and i have love for sport number five jeremy evans let's stay with the block theme shall we the block and then guess who on the other end the alley oh Jeremy Evans, it's a bonus play, two for one. The rejection and the oop. Good enough for play number five. Play number four now. Lakers in Portland, watch Jody Meeks. Gets that to go. Up and over Nicholas Batum. It's worth a second look. Jody Meeks helping the Lakers to the win on the road. Play number three, same game. Perfect timing. That's Kent Bazemore to Wes Johnson in the final seconds. Can't call it up any better. Can't execute it any better. Lakers get that win. Play number two, same game. Portland's Robin Lopez. Just watch. Oh. Folks, he's seven foot tall. Lopez with a double-double. And play number two from Monday. What could top all of those, you ask? I've got the answer for you. Number one play, it's LeBron James. Career high and franchise record 61 points. His first 50-point game at home. 22 field goals. That's a franchise record. 